Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. We are all about learning, sharing, and repeating here. And if this is your first time here, uh, a warm welcome. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notifications bell. As you know, so that helps me so, so much. And you can also consider becoming a member. Check out the join button to see all the perks that you can access. Right on to today's video, you will notice I have a wonderful guest with me today. Kevin McDonnell, Microsoft MVP. Really needs no introduction. If you've been watching my videos, for a, a long time, you will surely know who the fabulous Kevin is, but I'll let him give a quick intro for those of you who might not have come across him just yet. So hi, Kevin, how are you? Thank you very much. I'm, I'm not too bad, enjoying a little bit of uh, spring warmth here in the UK. Yeah, um, it's great, isn't it? Absolutely great. And we've both got sort of windows open and doors open and uh, <laughs> it's starting to get a bit warmer, uh, which is most welcome. I do feel a bit guilty saying this because I know people in Scandinavia I've seen in Sweden and Finland have had a sudden ju uh, dump of snow come across. Mm. So uh, I, I feel a little guilty enjoying it. So sorry to all those who haven't got the same weather. Indeed, yes. Well, we in the UK make the most of this while we have it because uh, it's not guaranteed by any by any uh, <laughs> stretch of the imagination, is it? So, <laughs> so um, Kevin, just briefly, could you just tell us a little bit about uh, who you are and your role, what you do for those who might not have seen your content before? Yeah, absolutely. So as, as Pete mentioned, I'm a, a Microsoft MVP been focusing a lot previously on the the kind of viva area uh, and employee experience but more and more these days as with many people uh, a lot of focus on co-pilots and uh, my role actually has encompassed that uh, i work at avenard a uh, very large microsoft partner we're partly owned by microsoft partly owned by accenture so we get all the cool techie toys from Microsoft, all the cool consultancy ideas and, and waffle from Accenture. Not official word, that one. Um, and there I'm the co-pilot strategy and modern workplace at AI leads, uh, which I've just about managed to say without having to stop and think about uh, on there. And what, what does that mean? I'm there trying to get people thinking about all the different uh, co-pilots. I, I, I pause slightly there because there's kind of more and more that that marketing push that it is one co-pilot underneath on there and it's just the different endpoints but for me i think there are so many different co-pilots and they need to be treated as different things that that's something i'd love to talk a little bit more about today about the different range and, and what people think about with co-pilot as many know as you know kev i was a a little bit of an early skeptic i thought oh is this going to be uh <laughs> the, the dangerous sort of ai that we see in movies but it's it's not there yet generative ai is very very different to that i challenge you to keep that caution i challenge you to always think i i'm i'm one of these mm. really irritating people who loves balance in life on there and mm. so you shouldn't stop using ai because you're scared of it but the same token if you're using it you should be aware of those things that that can be a problem. And uh, mm. I, I know at, at Avenard and uh, many other places that talk about responsible AI and only using it in the right places is absolutely key. Mm -hmm. um, a, a great example from Microsoft is they used to be able to have face recognition. Now you need to go through a lot of hoops and, and really document your use case and validate that you're going to be doing it before they will let you use some of those services. You can't just mm. go out and you know set a camera on the front of your house and detect who's coming past um, on there. And, and I think that's good. And I think that is so important with AI is that you think about how it's used, how it could be abused on there. We've seen companies, uh, I think it's one of the ca Canadian airlines, um, in there that had to that they they kind of had a policy uh on how you get tickets but you could use the bot that they had out there that used generative ai to get much cheaper tickets by asking for specific things Ooh, and yeah. they they were responsible for that so if you put generative ai out there with people you are responsible for the outputs of that and so it's a really it really is Maybe not to keep that fear, but to keep that understanding of what it is, what it can do, what it shouldn't be doing, and putting those mm. right boundaries in there. Not just going, whoa, let's throw everything at it uh, as well. Mm. I'll continue to ask those sort of probing questions as AI develops over the next sort of five, six, ten years, whatever, what it turns into next. Because the minute it goes further than the generative part of it, I will worry. But you're absolutely right. You do have to be concerned about... Uh, what what it can do without you really diving into the the, the finer 
uh, grand detail of it, like that uh, that airline incident, uh, which I did see on the news, yeah. and they, they were held to account for that. They had no way out of it, did they? No recall. So. <laughs> no, they tried, they tried, but no, they didn't. Yeah. And, and and I think it, this is why one of the things I love about the different co-pilots is they're a great starter for your your AI strategy. You know, if you're Ooh. going and using OpenAI, using Azure OpenAI, even some of the other large language models or small language models that are out there, there's a lot of thinking and preparation you need to do that. If you want something Ooh. where Microsoft's doing a lot of the work for you and putting in that responsible AI, helping guarantee mm. that you're you're looking at the right uh, security. I will we'll come back to that a bit more later. Mm. That if you if you go and enable co the different co-pilots within your organization, you're kind of jumping ahead. Um, you're not having to do a lot of that work from there. So it, I love that co-pilot as an initiator to your, your mm. AI strategy that you can work from there, whether it's co-pilot for Microsoft 365, whether it's things like GitHub co-pilot, even security co-pilot, you can get those enablers. Yes, at a cost in many cases. Um, there is a license and also the adoption. You should never downplay that, the amount of work it takes to kind of get people changing their habits to get the best value from those. Mm. That's where you've got that momentum. But it's it's a lot you'd get that if you're building your own solutions. Um, plus you'd have to kind of cater for all those different scenarios. So mm. so getting getting going with one of those co-pilots is a lovely way. Then going on and looking to extend those. So certainly with Copilot for Microsoft 365, tools like Copilot for service, Copilot uh, for sales, there's extensibility points. And in fact, uh, Copilot for security has also got that. I've seen more of those conversations come up, which mm. is fantastic. So you can make the most of that interface, that experience for users, and then mm -hmm. scope in your um, scope in your wider data or help scope to particular elements that when you're asking for that, you mm -hmm. can bring that experiences back in a more curated way. So coming back to Copilot Microsoft 365, you could bring in things like your ServiceNow knowledge bases or Salesforce knowledge bases where you've built that information in there or your own custom applications, ERP systems, et cetera. You can bring that into Copilot on there. Or, and, and I'm kind of seeing this thinking happen a bit more, you could say, actually, because Copilot for Microsoft 365 has got a very broad range. It's going to be looking at your data. And for many organizations, it's going to be a huge amount. Mm. You can extend to say, actually, if someone's asking about, let's say, policies, then I want you to scope down to this area. We've got this policy SharePoint site. We've got a few other areas where we maybe have a policies website. You can say, I just, if people are asking about policies, let's try and nudge them towards this sort of content. So you're improving that experience for the end user as well. That's part of that extensibility mm. story is, as well. And mm. then you can carry on to look at that as building custom co-pilots that could have that very focused scenarios uh, on there, which could be bots. I'm, I'm loving more and more the stories where using generative AI, not just with bots, but kind of in that intelligence that you have in the flow of things you're creating uh, as well is really powerful as well. So whether that's embedding it into specific applications and making recommendations, analyzing data that are very specific scenarios scenarios and you can use that that prompting language to kind of tailor that down and then the fourth element in that ai strategy is looking at automation and mm. this is probably the one going back to your your comments about being scared about ai that's mm. where i think we need to be cautious and have a lot of control over but if we can remove some of the friction for people by automating things with that that's where they're very powerful having these agents that can run to process content in in ways that we need will be really exciting and i, I see this as a, a big growth area um a, a lot of the the kind of technical side of things we're look, looking at a lot of this open ai uh, has a lot of this notion of assistance and agents and i think we'll see that's a big growth area uh coming through soon one thing on Copilot for Microsoft 365 that I find is very important and an element of it that perhaps customers who are adopting it don't necessarily appreciate it is that you can't just roll it out and give people licenses. There is an element of security baked into that consideration in terms of how your data can be searched. Is your, um, your tenant ready for search? And there's data all over the place and organizations need to be mindful of that, right? 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, again, going back to my earlier comment, I like to take a balanced view of this. So uh, yeah. I absolutely agree with it. Organisations need to think about their, how their data is shared. Mm. Um, why I'm hesitating slightly is I hate to tell you, everyone, you should have been doing this for years. This is yeah. not something new. This is something that people like Peter and myself have been banging on about. Think about how your data is shared. Think about who you've got access. I remember, I'm just looking at a year. I think it must have been 10 years ago almost, which is terrifying, maybe nine years ago, searching in a, a, an, organization, an organization where I was working and I was looking to find get a headset uh, there. Mm. So I'd look for Sennheiser. And the top result was the head of service desk's OneNote on his personal OneDrive. And it had all his one-to-ones with his direct reports on there. Mm. And he happened to be talking about Sennheiser as well as a lot of kind of mentoring. So mm -hmm. thankfully, I knew the person, called them up and said, you might want to check your permissions are open to everyone. It's like, no, they're not. Oh, yes, they are. <laughs> so it, this has been the case. And this exposure... Uh, of data has been an issue for a while and it, it's interesting to use the word security and i, I might uh, ask your views on this to me that's it's more compliance it's it who can see things to, yeah. to me security i think a bit more of that outer layer on there i know it's mm. a kind of blend between the two but it's it's things you can see that you shouldn't there's there's yeah. nothing the security of copilot and sharepoint is fantastic what isn't great is the way that people consider how they're sharing. And mm. I, I'd say there's things that can be done to to improve that. So yeah. go, going, going back to what you're saying, I think organizations do need to think about that. But they shouldn't just stop Copilot because they, they're a little worried that they're, they're sharing may be too broad or too little mm. they should look at kind of pilots look at where those areas are maybe open up and I, I have mixed views about the um oh, what's it called restricted search but you can kind of tone down and sort of allow different areas to to be kind of fed into copilot and search generally so you could sort of start to release copilot for areas where you're more comfortable that there's less uh, private data and then start to kind of scope that out as you put in place your your sensitivity labeling your um attention labeling your understanding of that data and, and making sure that it, it's not a security team's job it's not the digital workplace team's job it's the owners of that content they must be the people that take mm -hmm. responsibility and that that's where you know you were talking about adoption and change that's where often that cycle hits is if you put a document up there, it is your responsibility to make sure that's set correctly. And so training people to understand that uh, is key for there. But doing that alongside Copilot, have that carrot and that stick and balance those between. Don't just stop and do nothing because you'll be left behind. Mm. You're absolutely right when you say security, it's more compliance. I tend to use, rightly or wrongly, I use security as a one size fits all term sometimes. And how I like to describe it, and I did so in one of my most recent videos, is I, I, I tend to think of cybersecurity at the top there, broken down into mm. SCI, security compliance identity, maybe it's management and privacy in there yeah. now as well, the SCIMP <laughs> acronym that we have now. Um, and compliance, I, I get really frustrated because that's probably my <laughs> favorite. Sorry, you have don't skimp on skimp. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> it is nice. It's a, it's a really great acronym, isn't it? I love that so much. But um, but the compliance bit, uh, I get really frustrated because that's my favorite part of everything within Microsoft security, compliance, identity, management, privacy. That's And that's probably because it's it's the part that's least loved by, um, yeah. by most organizations, or at least understood the importance of it. And I've been banging on that drum for probably a good five, six, seven years now to organizations. And, and still, I'm finding that customers I'm talking to, they see it as a lesser priority than the endpoint devices and uh, hardening <laughs> the identity. And it's yeah. still a, a more difficult conversation to have than it should be. I'm, I'm seeing signs that um, it's getting more acknowledged now, the, the penny's starting to drop. And certainly Copilot from 365 is is a good conversation starter for that. It's it's another um, way in for, for, for people like me, cyber security professionals, as I should refer to myself, rather than just calling it blanket security. But uh, but yeah, it, it's it less about nightclubs, more about data. 
Yeah, ex exactly. Uh, protecting. And I always say that your data, when you think about it, that is what those bad actors out there, that's what they want. They want to get to that. And if they penetrate your defenses, mm. um, your, your identity, if they get through, then get to your data and it's not appropriately protected, governed, um, then they can do what they want with it. They can encrypt it, uh, ransom it, sell it. Um, and you, you, you're in a really bad situation then because yeah. uh, that's going to lead to loss of production, reputational damage. Your competitors will be rubbing their hands together with glee. So, um, and um, yeah, you, you have to have a defense in depth strategy because, and, and you need to be considering how AI can uh, be a part of that story going forward. Because as I said, mm. on a recent video, you can bet, you can absolutely bet that the bad actors out there will be leveraging AI techniques in their attacks as well so yeah massively yeah absolutely and, and and i know we talked about responsible ai everyone should be looking to put it in unfortunately there's some people out there who won't and mm. uh, i think microsoft's great where it's got those SaaS services it can help lock those down and block people from doing that by the flip side those uh, you know small language models people being able to build their own large language models to keeping mm. those offline you haven't got the same level of controls over those. Mm. So uh, it, it's it's understanding that and bringing that through, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. So one thing I hear a lot about in, in terms of this uh, co-pilot for this, co-pilot for that journey that's been uh, mentioned a lot is co-pilot studio. So what for, for anyone who, and I, can, <laughs> I, I knew this was coming on, uh, <laughs> but for anyone who doesn't know what that is, can you explain what that is, what the purpose of it is and, and why you scrunched your face up at that? <laughs> yeah. So uh, I the idea of Copilot Studio I love uh, on there and what it will become I love. The reason I pull the face is because there's a lot of promise there that hasn't quite um, born reality. So I'll, I'll come back to that in a minute. Hmm. In terms of Copilot Studio, it's kind of come from what was Power Virtual Ag Agents. And if we look at it, it it's got kind of two, two key areas. One is to create custom Copilots. The mm. artist formerly known as bots, uh, you could say, but now with a lot more power. Uh, and then you've got extensions to Copilot. Um, in fact, to Copilot, because yes, it's Copilot for Microsoft 365, but this extensibility story is going to spread across the other Copilots as well. So there's a consistent message starting to come across there. So it, it, if I touch on that extensibility side for a minute, um, it was a lovely video that Charles the Manor did of trying to say, uh, we could take that policies example. What is the policy for um, bringing my own device within an organization? And it, Copilot itself, they may find lots of different documents across there and not know what's the, the real one. You can't kind of, you can nudge it and hint at it towards getting the right thing, but it, it's hard to do. So instead, you can create a uh, an extension with Copilot Studio that looks, you can drive it with prompts in the description. You can say, if someone is asking about policies, then you're the policy um, professional. You can answer questions. You should use this information to help mm -hmm. do that. And it will steer towards those things. And then once you publish that, and enable that plugin so the end user has to decide to actively enable that as a plugin as well then it will help answer that uh that question hmm. and so you can do that and and that's not just about kind of scoping down and saying this knowledge you could build some logic in there so you could say if someone's talking about this then reply with this sort of thing uh if you've seen power automate you know you've got those flows you can build up it's a little bit like that within power virtual agents it's called mm. topics within then you can create a topic for your extension and you can use something called generative answers which uses that uh generative ai based on your sources of knowledge. And that can be a SharePoint site, can be a specifically uploaded document, can be a website, and you can build some custom sources within there mm. as well. Um, the more powerful side, I think, is those custom co-pilots, what were Power Virtual Agents. I, I know, Pete, we were both at CPS. When I first started CPS, I was absolutely obsessed with bots. 
loves mm. the bot framework and power virtual agents and looking and balancing what you can do with those things. Love that automation that you could have that conversational AI with people and drive there. And that's that's what, what Copilot Studio is built on. It allows you to build those conversations. It will recognize the topic you're talking about and build workflows around those different topics. So you can answer things, jump between different um, information. You can get it to answer specific questions. But you can also connect to actions so you can connect to other systems through power platform connectors. So that could be to a power automate flow, but you can connect into other third party apps, your own apps. So you can have, you know, again, service now, things like Workday, pretty much anything that's got an API you can then connect to. So you can have it actually take actions uh, as as well within that. So you can build that conversational piece that can be embedded within Teams. It can be embedded within SharePoint. You can even put those external. So you can, uh, with the right licenses, you can build those bots or those custom co-pilots as they're now known uh, and mm. external ways of answering that. And it, it allows people to have those natural language way of asking things without having to, a, a lot of bots before were a little bit more about pattern and matching so it would look for those intents on blocks of your pattern now with generative ai you can be a lot more natural and and you're still trying to root it towards the right intent of what you're trying to get it to do but generative ai does a lot more of that for you so it becomes easier for that to to take place generally as well so that that's my kind of nice side of copilot studio hmm. the the painful side um trying to root uh, within Copilot for Microsoft 365 to hit one of those extensions is tricky. Um, you, you define your description, but you often find that you have to be fairly prescriptive with what you're asking to get it rooted to the, the right thing on there. Now, I know Microsoft's looking at they are there are improvements coming to that. But right mm. now, I've seen a lot of issues with people kind of building these lovely extensions and then having them never used. And again, end users need to actively turn on that plugin. So they need to go in there. Mm. And, and in fact, in your Copilot for Microsoft 365 environment, currently you have to raise a support ticket to enable those plugins. Mm. Um, something I did on my own um, personal tenant the, the other day uh, on there. So you need to, it, it just, some of those flows go in there. I've seen scenarios where sometimes you publish your extension and it can take a few hours or even quite a few hours. I've seen sometimes it take 24 hours and I've seen it be quicker for some people than others. And as a, it's fair to am uh, an iterative developer. Um, mm. Some people may call that a hacker that I just throw a load of code, see if it works, try again, try again. I, I like to say iterative on there. Now, for me, that's very painful. If I've got to wait two hours to see if something's worked and if it's rooted through, it, it's very frustrating. And I think people have kind of gone with the expectation they'll just be able to publish it and root things through. And it, they haven't quite seen that experience quite so much. Um, I think it will improve. But mm. that, that's why I often pull pull a little bit of a face around Copilot Studio. Also, because there's other options, you can create Teams message extensions to, to build your extensions. And there, a lot of people have those already, and you can use those to kind of connect into information. Mm. Um, there's there's a story around Power Platform Connectors. If you've built an open AI plugin, there's, there's more pro code solutions way that you can do that as well that I feel are often kind of push to one side. And I, I think some really nice scenarios that you can build if you have developers in there as well. So mm. I, I feel that story of Copilot Studio should extend a little bit to those as well. Yeah, it, it sounds like it's got a way to go. And uh, much like yourself, I recently got access to Copilot M365 license myself for my own personal tenant. And in doing so, I don't know why in my head, once I've got that license in there and uh, assigned it to my user, I thought I would magically get a, a co-pilot for 365 admin center or some sort of admin experience, but, but, <laughs> <laughs> but no. Uh, so it's interesting you say you have to raise a support ticket to do things like that at the moment. I wonder if that experience will sort of grow and develop. I imagine it will as, as it matures. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm making sure I don't get in trouble, but uh, the yeah. MVP summit was on recently, and there's there's lots of nice stuff going uh, coming. I think uh, I think I can say that. So I, I, I'm I'm being cynical now, but keep an eye because I think what is being promised will happen. 
um oh, cool. just that if you have i always find in life you have you know lower your expectations then when you try things they exceed that you feel a lot better if you set your expectations mm-hmm. right at the top try it out and they don't meet them then you kind of throw things out out the window so don't mm-hmm. don't throw it out the window try it be prepared for a bit of time and um learning with it as well uh, yeah. and then then you get a great result yeah, I'm laughing because we're we're one year away from 2025, which will make it 10 years past 2015 when real hoverboards should have been a thing. And I'm still <laughs> waiting. <I'm> still waiting. <laughs> I well, well, my favorite band names, and uh, they the music's good, but not great. But it's called We Were Promised Jetpacks. Uh, <laughs> I just love that. I just think that's such a good band name. Yeah, it is a great band name, definitely. One thing, you know. We talked about the different co-pilots. There's, I, I know yep. Donna Saka has previously talked about there being 156 either out live or being worked on on mm-hmm. there. And I think this is this has caused a bit of confusion and terrified people, which is why people fall back on the, oh, I just mean co-pilot for M365 or uh, Microsoft co-pilot, the artist formerly known as Bing Chat Enterprise and the, the mm. public one. Oh, yeah. Yes. One of the things, uh, and I might try and get this this published as an image off, off the back of this one. Um, mm-hmm. One of the things I try and get people thinking about the co-pilots is trying to shrink it down into the different uh, experiences that people have with them. So mm-hmm. grouping together the co-pilots in, in two different ways. One by uh, kind of to a degree where they're used. So there's a lot that are available for customer experiences. So the ones mm. around dynamics, um, co-pilot for dynamic sales, uh, field service, uh, a lot of the ones there are generally built towards that customer experience. Marketing, mm. uh, it's not marketing anymore, it's customer uh, customer something, I should remember that off the top of my head, but th- those kind of dynamics ones are generally positions to helping towards working with your customers on there. Mm. Copilot for sales, copilot for service, it's geared towards that element. Mm. Then you have those employee experience ones, and those ones are geared like copilot for Microsoft 365, but also you could put into this bracket um, Viva. You know, there's a lot mm. of copilot for Viva ones um, within that world as well. You've got co-pilots uh, within power platform whether it's power automate power apps a lot of those that are there to kind of help employees be more efficient in what they do and then what i call the specialist one so co-pilot for security to me fits within that you're a security specialist or hmm. github co-pilot that fits within that world as well and then you can also subdivide things as well, that you can look at co-pilots that work for everyone. So co-pilot in Windows, Microsoft co-pilot, co-pilot for Microsoft 365. There's something that can help pretty mm. much everyone in, within an organization. And I know frontline workers and paying $30 per user per month may be a conversation that's worth having, but generally everyone can get the benefits from those. You've then got co-pilots by different roles. So you're then looking at sales people, you're looking at finance people having particular ones, developers, um, low code developers, different roles that have an off the shelf co-pilot that can help them. Mm. And then you look at that co-pilot for a specific scenario. That's really where you're starting to look more at those custom co-pilots. And you can build custom co-pilots that help everyone that help different roles uh, as well but really that one by role and you end up with a matrix and i've got a, a bit of a diagram that kind of plots the different co-pilots like that and that i found has really helped people kind of ground themselves a little bit more about not there's co-pilots everywhere and i, I don't really get where how i'm going to be helped if you think of it by uh, for everyone by role and uh, mm. by those scenarios it helps to ground what is important the technology is important what you do with that technology is the important bit so mm. getting towards what the challenges you have and then rooting towards the the different ones there as well i think is key and that i think is where copilot for security comes in what are the challenges there it's mm. things like how do you deal with an event coming in how how uh, you've got a security incident taking place you've got all these logs mm. and things how do you help with that how do you help prevent things before they've happened on there as mm. well. It's those scenarios that help. It's not the technology in itself. I must admit the uh, artist formerly called Bing Chat Enterprise, uh, Microsoft Copilot now, right? Um, I uh, yes. 
I I really I I use that so often uh, for these very videos actually because coming up with video titles and video descriptions is mm-hmm. you wouldn't believe how hard that is. Well, you would because you're, <laughs> uh, but, but, but people but people may, may not, and uh, it's it's hard. But it, well, I'm so great hard. at coming up with really bad ones. So <laughs> <laughs> so am I. But I'm learning so much from tools like Microsoft Copilot and uh, AI capabilities built into some of the uh youtube extensions that i've got things like TubeBuddy, for example they use ai to do title keyword mm, generators and uh, seo and tag generators that sort of thing so it's it's everywhere uh, outside of the, the the comfortable microsoft landscape that you and i reside in but uh it's made my life so much easier coming up with <laughs> meaningful right. the, the comfortable microsoft one uh i, I like what you're <laughs> thinking there but I, i'm not sure i'd entirely agree with that. <laughs> Well, sometimes comfortable, sometimes challenging. Never dull, I guess. Yes. Never dull. <laughs> yes, yes, I agree with that. Um, um, the, the other one I'd say with Microsoft Copilot, you know, you talk about using there. I love that you've got it with the, uh, and it's got an awful name uh, now, but what was Bing Chat Enterprise that's there mm-hmm. secured for your organization that makes sure the, the prompts yes. you're asking there don't go outside. Really useful way and a really useful way of getting people thinking about how to write prompts because mm-hmm. you can make that available for everyone. One, as you say, they can use it for scenarios like that. You can build internal communities for people sharing good ideas on how they use that without spending any money. You get that with your Microsoft 365 license. And I think it's, I think it's included in pretty much all the M365 um, oh, yeah. now. It's extended out to those. So you can bring that. You can feel safe as an organization that people are using that. Make sure you educate people and you... I don't want to say lock things down because I'm, I'm always nervous about saying that, but make sure you educate people in the right way to make sure they're using that Bing chat enterprise and not their own personal Microsoft accounts where they, yeah. they could be leaking that data, make sure people understand the difference between those and make it easy for them to fall into using the right one. And then you've got a great place for people to try these things out as well. Oh, very important. Another tool that I do use a lot as well, actually, is designer.microsoft.com. Now, Mm. I don't use that for my thumbnails because my wonderful wife, Louise, does those for me. She takes all sorts of different pictures of me in different poses of me pointing or thumbs up. or Louise Louise Pilot, I like it. Yeah, Louise Pilot, yeah, I, I do like that. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> um, and she does an amazing job. But you, um, I do use it I'm on my channel. Uh, check it out if you haven't already. If you go to the community tab, there's a little bit of uh, chat going on there, uh, some general chat, some members-only chat, if you remember. Mm-hmm. And when we get a new member on the channel, I like to just not mention their name in text. I like to do a little sort of youtube type generated image saying, welcome, new member, and it just makes it look nicer and more more thoughts gone into it and it, it can do that in, in in seconds but the one criticism i have of it and uh, i don't know if you know why this is the case why can't it spell why does it add random letters in if you put text in oh what's in in designer as in the imagery uh, i yeah. don't know uh what i would say is it's got a lot better uh yeah. it now seems to come in with words and just add the odd letter within there um mm. one of the improvements uh, and you've caught me out here. I, I can't remember if it's come to designer. It's definitely come to Microsoft Copilot because you, hmm. you can kind of generate images in that or in designer. I think it's in both. Yeah. But you can now ask it to to redo certain sections. So you could say where you've where you've ah. put this text in there. Can you make sure it's spelled that? Now, I, I haven't. I, I will be honest. I haven't tried that that much, but I know that you can kind of get it to tweak an image previously you had to kind of get it to regenerate uh on yeah. there and i know we we had um when we we're trying to come up the logo for copilot connection which i will come back mm. to in a minute yeah. um we found one that was almost right but we wanted to tweak and we just couldn't get the same the same prompt would never generate that same image again so we ended up photoshopping it and editing yeah. it out that way which wasn't ideal because we're not the best artists on there but it it kind of worked to what we were getting from there mm. but now you can get, get it to redo that so um why is it bad i, I don't know i haven't actually seen yeah. anything that's kind of said on there that's, that's interesting i hadn't thought about that yeah um, it was like specific. taking a letter out or misspelling or adding letters in mm. so interesting I, I i've asked a few people that and i don't know why but uh, i do love it though i mean the the little image of me on my banner on youtube and in the little circly bit on the youtube page 
I use designer for that. And I put in certain text and it, it took me about, oh, I don't know, something about 36 attempts to get one that I thought, oh, that's me. Uh, but uh, yeah. you've got to watch out for that because once you log, you have to log in to use it and it saves everything you do to your OneDrive in a folder called pictures, doesn't it? So <laughs> that could very quickly I fill up. About that. <laughs> yes, I'm going to check that actually. <laughs> but I do like that, that you can go back to it as well. And uh, if, if you find one, then you kind of go, ah, it's not quite right. And you carry on and you go, actually, yeah, it was good. Hmm. Where did you yeah. go? So. Exactly, exactly. But anyhow, you mentioned Copilot connection there. Uh, I, I did want to come on to that, uh, as I know you did. So tell us a little bit about what Copilot connection is and your passion for it. Yeah, so Copilot Connection, it's uh, Zoe Wilson, a uh, fellow MVP, uh, also works at Avenard. Uh, she's a global lead for data apps and workflow and also the go-to-market lead for Copilot um, at, at Avenard. She's a regional director. Um, we, we have a big problem with our intros. We, we spend a lot of time talking about our roles uh, on there just because there's too much going on within mm -hmm. it. But um, we, we were talking about the fact a, a, a little bit of what I've talked about here. Everyone talks about Copilot, but they tend to have their view of it. So you speak to security people, they're thinking Copilot for security. Mm. Uh, I had a conversation and someone was saying how rubbish Copilot was. And I was like, hey, it's really good. And she's like, oh, it went on, it doesn't do this and it doesn't create an app. And I was like, it doesn't create apps. Yes, it does. <laughs> oh, you mean Copilot in Power Platform um, mm. on there? So we, we wanted to try and bring a podcast that talked about as many of the different co-pilots and brought the news of all the, the different areas that are available and try and bring Ooh. some of the experts from Microsoft, from the community. Um, we recorded, I think it was 12 videos in total when we were over in Seattle for the MVP Summit and got lots of viewpoints from people looking at different areas. Um, some great people talking about data and co-pilot in Fabric and in Power BI on there as well. So we tried to bring all these different viewpoints. We'd love to hear from people if they're particular areas uh i know you were touching on copilot uh, for security um mm -hmm. there was a lovely tweet thread that our, our good friend uh, rue campbell did around yeah. some of his experiences and and i like you know we don't work at microsoft we can be honest about some of these things mm. we love some of the marketing material and we will happily share some of that but we also want to challenge where these things don't necessarily always work and, you know like you were talking yeah. about designer there we've got to be acknowledge some of these things on there and <laughs> Ru did a great job of what is this doing how is this coming back how is this helping me and uh talking mm. through the real life experience on that and i think that that is important it, it's good to get those balance of the the different viewpoints we we try and bring that and challenge we had uh trisha sinclair and one thing she talked about is the sustainability impact of generative ai the extra mm. data centers the computing power used for that is huge mm. uh, i i think microsoft's doing a nice job out making sure those extra um the extra data centers that have been built out are sustainable. They're, they still stick into their sustainability goals, but it must be really very hard to do this with the growth they're seeing in power consumption things. So it's it's having those challenges of the, the different items on there. So we, we're a podcast. We release um, generally every two weeks. We, we try and stick to that, uh, depending on our schedules on there. Um, we push it out as podcasts. You can find us by looking for Copilot Connection. We're on YouTube as well. Copilotconnection.com has all the links uh, on there as well. Mm. And the the other thing, and uh, a good friend Simon Doy uh, very kindly has created us some stickers for this, is we are very pernickety about how you spell Copilot and how ah. you name the different Copilots. And I did notice, Pete, you talked about security Copilot. No, it's Copilot for security. And, and hopefully you've heard me talk about Copilot in Power Platform and Copilot in mm. Windows. That for and in kind of defines a lot of bit about whether you're paying for a license, whether it's kind of embedded in an existing license. So I, I uh, Simon made us this sticker and calling us the co-pilot cops uh, as, as we try and correct people's <laughs> like that. of that. And, and, and I think it's more because I think the naming actually helps understand some of those items. So we try and try and educate people and make, make them aware of that, even though we can be a bit of a pain in the backside about it at times. No, I love it. And it was a good reminder to me when you called me out on it because I am... Um uh it's easy to slip into those old habits isn't it and uh <laughs> because it's been security copilot for so long and then boom that do we, we change it all <laughs> and then it's a yeah. copilot for security copilot for microsoft 360. i actually do like the name changes i think it flows better 
Um, and yeah. Put the co pilot as the brand, if you like. It's a mouthful. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a mouthful, but it, it, it defines what it is and where it is as well. So mm. I, I think it, it makes sense. And that's why that's why i encourage people there's a good reason i still call twitter twitter because i think that makes more sense mm -hmm. uh, there, there's a couple of mics off things i still use the old name and i genuinely can't think of one off the top of my head um but i i'm, I'm not one who will always jump on that name naming just because microsoft has but i do think the co-pilot ones make sense yeah, I agree with you on Twitter. In fact, I was so offended by it that I left Twitter. <laughs> but, uh, that's, that's not an anti-Elon Musk thing because I now have Starlink uh, SpaceX uh, internet. <laughs> oh, yeah. fantastic stuff. That's true. But no, uh, and, and actually, may, maybe this is a good time and I might get in trouble from Zoe for launching this. Um, we, we're actually discussing having a new event and we've come come up with a name. So we are looking to have a month of co-pilot uh, in June and we're looking to get uh, a lot of speakers to to come and um, record sessions. So a bit like Gregor Suti does a festive tech calendar. We yeah. want to make June about being the month of co-pilot. So we're going to get uh -huh. lots of people speaking. We're going to try and cover the different areas. So all the different kind of key co-pilots that exist, but also different areas. So preparing for co-pilot demos for co-pilot mm -hmm. case studies and real life experience of their, uh, we'd love to hear you know, if anyone's listening, has an idea of things they want or want to speak on there, do, do reach out to us. Cause we, we want to bring that broad range of, of different things into one place for it as well. So, uh, yeah, you hear it first, uh, the month of co-pilot in June powered by the co-pilot connection. Oh wow! An exclusive on the channel. Thank you, my friend. And sorry, Zoe, if you if you weren't ready for that, but <laughs> <laughs> it's out there now. <laughs> yeah. See, now I'm going to get in trouble if we do change the name and and, and be sort of true Microsoft with a rename. But no, I, I think. Oh we're yeah, you you'd be emulating Microsoft there if you do change it. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> wonderful stuff indeed. But before we wind up. Uh, I will ask you one thing, actually, is you you and I are both sort of seasoned podcasters, YouTubers, and <laughs> myself in the realms of cloud conversations. I get asked occasionally, are we bringing that back? We've never officially retired it and said it's dead or never coming back, but who knows, maybe. But what, what's happening with the Grey Hat uh, Beard and Princess? Is that going to come back anytime soon, do you think? Um, oh, you've caught me out on this one. Um, we're going to have yeah. a conversation soon. So we uh, we all love each other. We would love to carry on the podcast. The issue has just been time and trying to get yeah. everyone together in the the same place. Um, it just hasn't happened on there. So uh, we are, we're talking. We would love to bring it back, uh, but no, no updates. As you say, not officially retired. Uh, no updates at the moment. Yeah, I appreciate that. The same thing with Cloud Conversations. It was just getting everyone together at the same time. And we're all busy people. And uh, a similar situation on the M365 uh, Security Compliance User Group, which I'll give a little plug to here because it um, that was originally founded by myself and our good friend Al Erdley. And then we invited Rue Campbell in to, to become a third organizer. And uh, Alan and myself just found we just didn't have the time for it anymore. So we've stepped mm -hmm. aside. We've given Rue ownership of that and he's relaunching it soon. Um, oh, on, nice. uh, on LinkedIn, he's, he's posted some information, which I reposted. And he's got a new co-organizer, one of his colleagues at, um, at Threatscape, where he works. Uh, the, I know the guy's name, William, F I hope I'm not gonna butcher his surname. He's a French <laughs> guy, really nice guy, William Francillet. I think he's called uh, William. Really, oh yes, I apologize if yeah. I've got your name wrong. Really nice guy, but you will do look out for that. You'll be in great hands with Rue and William. I'm going to try and join as a as an attendee rather than an organizer when I can and support it. But uh, but yeah, there's so many great community events, and uh, I think it's 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 very sensible. I think that doing people at the same company, it's it's not that no. you want to be that company name, but I can see Zoe's calendar, and we can find a kind of slot that's free. Uh, try and do that across different domains. It's just mm. painful, uh, oh, sadly. So I, I think that's why a lot of people do do it. Completely agree with that. And uh, in my own um, day job at Insight, I'm trying to inspire some of the wonderful people that I know across the various teams to to get into this community journey and uh, embrace it. And uh, who knows, maybe he's even become Microsoft MVPs one day as well, because there's some fabulous um, people across all these organizations that we're part of. 
and, and maybe certain people who are follically challenged like myself, who uh, were very involved in the community and have gone a bit quiet, could come back and do more, Mr. Smith, if you're listening. <laughs> yes, I was talking to Mr. Smith just uh, a couple of days ago. <laughs> he's, uh, he's doing very, he's very, very busy, like we all are. And that's probably why, but it's uh, such, such a great uh, guy. I owe, I owe you a lot, and, uh, but I'm sure we'll see him back sooner rather than I later. So. Yeah, yeah I hope so too. I, you, you mentioned events. I should probably call out there's a few good events coming up yeah. um, that I'll be attending. Collab Summit over in Wiesbaden in Germany. There's a lot of good people. I think ah. they've only got about 300 tickets left. So if you are looking at that, move quickly because they're getting pretty close to selling out from that. And that'll be a huge event uh, over in the UK, Commsverse, uh, down at Mercedes Benz World. So if you like your cars, I'm mm. uh, going to be talking co pilot strategy. Oh, sorry. Uh, using Copilot's part of your AI strategy there, and we go into a bit more detail of some of the things I talked about today. Uh, a lot of good teams, events, and lots of hardware always at that one. It's always good to see the the kind of physical kit that goes on. Well, on that note, uh, let's wind things up, and uh, I shall let you go back to your very busy day. It's been wonderful to catch up with you, my friend. I shall see you hopefully sooner rather than later. Thank you so much for your time. Um, we'll wind things up. Thanks to my uh, viewers, subscribers, and members. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit the Smash notification that bell. subscribe. As you do so, uh, your support is massively appreciated. Um, okay, well, you all take care. We'll see you all very soon. Thanks all. Thanks, Kev. Bye-bye.